Builds back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Weber, for five minutes. Thank you, sir. Administrator Regan, uh, the summer is almost officially here. I'm sure you noticed my ice cream suit by now. And I, I understand that the chairman has invited you back. And hopefully if you come in May, you'll get to wear Colonel Sanders' suit as well. So just a little fun there. Uh, <laughs> I want to ask you about the American Innovation and Manufacturing Act, or AIM Act. Before I was elected to Congress, I owned and operated an HVAC company in Texas, and I know that keeping systems cooling folks in the summer literally is a matter of life or death. Um, that is, this is why Congress took great care and aim to ensure an adequate supply of hydrofluorocarbons, or HFCs, that would be available for the lower cost HVAC system refrigerant. Let me put that in perspective from personal experience. And you, we can talk about uh, underserved communities, or we can talk about low socioeconomic. I forget exactly what, what the representatives will get, the terms y'all used. But because of the rules that were put in place by the federal government, you went into somebody's house, and if they needed an evaporator coil that was leaking up in the attic or in the closet, it might be a $1,000 job. But because they increased efficiencies, SEER ratings on units that used a different form of refrigerant now the outside unit had to be changed. A lot of the duct work, the plenum work, had to be changed to match the larger system. And now it becomes an eight or $9,000 job. Well, just imagine a family who is struggling, who wasn't sitting around waiting, thinking, I mean, I hope my coal goes out. I got $1,000 set aside. Now all of a sudden they've got to come up with $9,000. And so those rules are really, really hurting American families, especially in my district. That was my experience. And so um, I feel like it feels like the EPA went out of its way to help AIM supporters with implementation. Um, but what, has the EPA done it, or have, they, have you deprioritized implementing this pro-consumer portion of the law until the very end? In other words, low-cost refrigerant needs to be available to those people. What say you? I, thank you for that. I, um, I would... Remark, I'm from North Carolina, not afraid of a seersucker suit, so uh, okay. got one ready for you. And, you know, I, I think we have worked really hard with the manufacturers on the implementation. I will double back with my staff to see if we are at this point here. Um, but I think we've reconstructed the allocations. We've worked very hard with the manufacturers on the execution of this rule. And if there's something outstanding on that last leg of it, I'd like to talk well, to you about well, it. Please do, because it, it really impacts the, the lower income people a lot more than maybe professionals, for example. It doesn't matter what their race, color, or creed is. If the professional people have two salaries and they're able to set aside some money, they're able to maybe manage that shock, because it's a shock to your budget. I've seen too many times standing in somebody's house where they just can't believe it's happening to them. And so please check into that and get back to us. Absolutely. Based on the EPA's timing, Americans are going to have no choice to pay for more air conditioning, higher prices this summer. Uh, when is the earliest time you think you can be back and wear that suit for us? <laughs> I'll, I'll circle up my staff and see what we can do. Okay. Secondly, uh, Administrator Regan, uh, sound chemical management policies are critical to American innovation and competitive. EPA's approach to chemical management can have a direct impact on America's ability to be an innovation leader, whether building and construction materials to semiconductors, healthcare and energy solutions like EVs, wind turbines, and solar panels. Last week, EPA issued a proposed TSCA rule, Tox Toxic Substance Control Act rule, where they announced it was missing information about economic impacts and workplace exposures and practices and, and ask the affected industry, those industries, to submit this information to the EPA. I'm also told that the EPA proposal did not take into account supply chain disruptions and whether risk management action could adversely affect critical infrastructure, IRA investments, and national security objectives, something I think I would hope this our, this administration would care about. Public comment rule period has been set for 60 days. EPA has said it will apply, use its applied similar regulatory practices for this chemical analysis despite critical data missing and sloppy scientific and regulatory impact analysis in future TSA or Toxic Substance Control Act cases. Will you commit now to extending the comment period past the 60 days so that st those same stakeholders 
are capable of collecting and providing EPA's requested information and to enable the agency to conduct the necessary comprehensive review of supply chain and infrastructure impacts. Well, let me, let me say that I don't think that we have proposed a rule that is incomplete. There may have been a request for additional information during the comment period, um, but I don't believe we've proposed an, an insufficient uh, rule. I will tell you, though, that um, because of the historic investments that we've seen, uh, whether it be CHIPS and Science Act or IRA, we're, we're taking all of this stuff into consideration. It, it absolutely is on my mind that we would propose something that would disrupt our pursuit of semiconductor or domestic manufacturing. So you can get back to us on that. Sure, I will, absolutely. Uh, my time's up. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.